Hey guys, how's it going? On this video, I'm going to show you the best retro controllers that you can buy to play on those classic games for your Switch Online. So if you're a gamer who likes to play on the NES, the SNES, the N64, or even the Mega Drive on your Switch Online, then you definitely need to get some of these controllers. So before I get on with it, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and uh, hit the notification bell, and let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. So we're going to start off with the NES controller. So as you can see, it's the classic NES controller. It's got a few additional buttons at the top, the uh, L and R buttons. Um, basically, these are so that you can, you know, navigate the switch menu. So you can see there, it's, it's also got the um, the synchronization button. Uh, other than that, it's the authentic original NES controller. Uh, it's got everything written on the back exactly like the original NES controller. Uh, very authentic, feels like the original. Anyone that grew up with this will know how cool this this controller is. It's, um, you can also uh, attach it to your Switch like this, like a Joy-Con. Uh, this, is, this is how you charge it. Um, so yeah, you can just leave it on like that and then just charge it. And uh, that's it, that's the NES controller. It's the first one we're going to look at. And yeah, you just press that button there at the back and then take it off. So, that's the NES controller. And next, we're going to look at the Super Nintendo controller. Now this is one of my all-time favorite controllers. It's got the L and R buttons, and then it's got two additional buttons here, uh, ZL and ZR. Um, it's got the classic button layouts, the diamond layouts, YX, BA. And underneath it, it's got the synchronization button so that you can connect it to your Switch. And on the back, as you can see, it's got the classic little, you know, information. And then, yeah, you've got the ZL, ZR. And then you charge it this time using a USB. And that's the Super Nintendo controller. And next up, it's the Nintendo 64 controller, the one that introduced us to the analog stick. And uh, this controller is a beauty. And as you can see at the top, it's got the home button again. And then it's got the ZL and ZR, as well as the classic trigger button at the back and then you got the, the slot where the rumble pack used to go in and the memory slot so obviously it's, nothing goes in this time it's just uh, as it is just uh, just there for nostalgia reasons to keep it authentic but yeah you can hold it two ways if you're playing fighting games you you know you got the d-pad and then you're playing 3d games playing goldeneye or something you got the trigger at the back and then yeah you hold it like this and then you've got your c buttons there to control the camera uh, this controller was just revolutionary, I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, there are the additional buttons there. Charge it with the USB, you got the ZL and ZR to navigate the switch menu, then you got your synchronization button right here. And yeah, that's it, it's the N64 controller. So next up, it's the GameCube controller, the Super Smash Brothers version. It's not any different, it's just a standard controller. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's got the classic shoulder buttons, uh, it's got the ZR, oh, and then it's got the um, yeah the trigger trigger shoulder buttons where you feel a little click when you push it in, um, but yeah it's got the, instead of the C buttons now we have a C stick, um, and the button layout in this controller is awesome, I mean there's a D-pad there, tiny little D-pad, if you want to play fighting games, and uh, just the button layout and everything is obviously very different on the GameCube, it's very unique. Um, as you can see it's wired so you'll need a adapter to play this one um, and the adapter is um, you know it comes with a Super Smash Brothers uh, but yeah it's pretty long wire so it's not wireless that's the one down thing about this um, but yeah it's wired it's uh, very authentic for anybody that's you know a fan of the originals but yeah you would use this controller to play games like Super Smash Brothers or Mario Sunshine on the Switch uh, you'd use this adapter that comes with the Smash Brothers. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy these individually anymore, but um, maybe you can look on eBay and find one if you can't find it in the stores. But yeah, that's that's how we'd use it, and it's got four slots, as you can see, to play four GameCube controllers. Uh, but yeah, that's the GameCube controller. And next up, we've got the Mega Drive controller. As you can see, it's got the three buttons. Uh, this is how the Mega Drive came out originally, just with three buttons. At the back it's got the Sega logo with Nintendo. It's crazy when you think about it because they were big rivals back in the days and now here they are. Nintendo and Sega teaming up to make a controller together. 
So this is the three button version, not the six button version, because the Mega Drive originally came out with only three controllers, uh, three buttons, sorry. And um, yeah, it didn't have a shoulder buttons like Super Nintendo. It, this is how it was. Look, there's no shoulder buttons. So yeah, and uh, underneath it, you got the um, the synchronization button, and that's it really. There's nothing else to it. It's a USB charge, and uh, that's it. Next up, I have a third party controller for N64 gamers. So this is the Brawler 64. Um, it looks like an N64 controller, but with a modern design. Uh, it's got the C buttons and the A and B button, just like an N64 controller. And at the top, you can see the capture button, that's new, and the menu button, just for the switch menus. And then it's got two trigger buttons and an LR, and it's got a normal D-pad and an analog stick, and you know, modern, modern. It's got a modern design to it with an N64 button layout. As you can see, it's called Retro Fighters Brawler 64, and I totally recommend this for anyone looking for a modern controller over the N64 controller. So yeah, that's the Brawler 64. Now then, let's have a look at some gameplay of uh, this NES controller on the Switch. So here's me playing Mario 3. This is one of the greatest video games of all time. Uh, and childhood nostalgia, a masterpiece. And uh, what better way to play it than with an NES controller? Um, yeah, it just works fine, it's very smooth. Honestly, I mean, you couldn't get a more nostalgic feeling than playing it with this original controller. Um, the NES controller is one of the best controllers of all time. I mean, it's the most um, influential controller, if you ask me. Before the NES, we had, um, yeah, we were playing with Ataris, you know, with a joystick and one pad. You know, it wasn't even a controller, it was more like a joystick. The NES controller is the controller that innovated how we hold a controller today. And uh, yeah, it's just playing Mario 3 with this is just amazing. So yeah, that's uh, the NES controller. Next, we've got the Super Nintendo controller. Now, I'm going to demonstrate Killer Instinct, which just got released recently on the Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, the reason I'm demonstrating Killer Instinct is because it's the uh, only fighting game on the Switch Online. Um, and it uses all six buttons. So, I'm going to try my best to do some combos with Orchid. Uh, because this this game utilizes all six buttons and, you know, we got shoulder buttons with the NES controller. Oh, SNES controller. Um, yeah, and it works fine. It's just perfect. It's just, for me, this is my favorite controller of all time. The Super Nintendo controller. I know it didn't have an analog stick, but we didn't need it. It, uh, you know, introduced us to shoulder buttons. This is uh, another groundbreaking controller. It introduced us to the diamond layout buttons, you know, that we have today on uh, PlayStation, Xbox and everything. So, you know, just, yeah. And I'm playing Killer Instinct, no problem, you know. It feels completely natural playing this game with a SNES controller. And I'm not doing too bad here, actually. I managed to pull off some combos, as you can see. Um, yeah, doing all right. Tried to knock her off here, but it didn't happen, I don't think. Is that going to happen? No, didn't do it. But yeah, that's the SNES controller. Feels awesome. Now let's have a look at the N64 controller. So, this game, this console was the one that introduced to the analog stick and uh, yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you, the N64 controller is highly recommended when playing the N64 games because of the C buttons, you know, just the controls. It's, the N64 games were designed for this, this, this pad in particular. You know, you, you need the C buttons to change the camera, um, the way the buttons are just laid out, it's these games are designed for this controller specifically. You will struggle playing N64 games with a modern controller. So um, yeah, I mean I'm playing it here right now, Mario 64, no problem. It feels just completely natural playing this game. Um, but yeah, I totally recommend it guys. If, you've, uh, if you can get hold of uh, you know, an N64 controller on Nintendo's website, I totally recommend it. It's worth it. Um, but if you can't, you've always got the budget option of a Brawler 64, as I uh, shown earlier on. Um, yeah, but you know, it, it runs fine, it feels completely natural, it feels like childhood nostalgia playing this game. And uh, yeah, this game never gets boring, I can play this game again and again and again. Love doing these moves, um, these uh, backflips and somersaults with Mario. You know, this is the game that taught us how to use the analog stick. 
You know, you could not do these moves on a D-pad. Let's just say that. This game was designed for the analog stick. And the C buttons work so naturally. Um, so yeah. Let's have another look at one more controller then, before we finish up here. So, just going to look at the Mega Drive controller. Just going to demonstrate Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is probably my favourite Mega Drive game. And uh, there's only three buttons here, but you know, it's, again, it feels natural. As with most Mega Drive games, the A button is usually like a power-up button. Um, and then you got to jump and you got to run and whatever. It's only got three buttons and a start button, so... Yeah, here's Sonic 2, and it feels, again, completely natural playing Sonic on a Mega Drive controller. So if anyone who grew up with a Mega Drive, this is perfect. And, uh, yeah, I totally recommend it. Anyway, that's uh, that's all my controllers for now. If you enjoyed this video, guys, let me know in the comment section. Leave a like, subscribe. Let me know if you've managed to get hold of any of these controllers yourself. Um, and uh, what you think of um, these controllers in general. And if you manage to get them on the Nintendo website, because they're they're actually quite hard to get hold of, you know the uh, you know the classic controllers, you know they're very difficult. But if you manage to get some, let me know in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, and support the channel. Subscribe, and let me know. Thank you for watching. Until the next video. <laughs>